Yo, what up? I'm Josh from Budget Church Live Streaming. I've gotten a ton of questions about these tally lights that we have on our camera and how I made them. So today I'm making a video to show you how you can make them for less than $5 a piece. Tally lights are used in live broadcast situations to visually communicate what camera is live at a current moment. This could be for the benefit of the camera op running the camera or for the talent on stage to know what camera to look at to look at the people at home. At our church, we specifically use them for our camera ops as a secondary way of them knowing who's live and who's not, in case it's too loud that they miss the verbal cues on their headsets. Because of that, these lights are pretty small and inconspicuous because we don't want them to be bright and distracting in the room. If we were going to make them so that the pastor can look at them, we would make them a lot bigger and probably face them the other direction on the camera, just to make it more obvious to him. There are a few different looks that tally lights can have, but here's how ours work. When a camera is previewed on our switcher, the light turns green, and when that shot is taken live, it goes red. This confuses some people because they don't know the green and red in broadcast world, but we keep it this way because that's the standard. This way, a camera op always knows the status of their shot, whether they've been live for a long time or they missed the verbal cue or heaven forbid our comms completely went out. We would be able to operate without comms just from these visual cues. Now, just to be clear, we're not also doing something else when we hit preview and program to manually change these lights. They connect directly to our ATEM switcher in order to stay completely in sync with whatever we're doing automatically. That's what makes them so powerful. We don't even have to think about it. So as soon as I cut to a different camera, the tally lights will respond appropriately. They honestly work so well and have been such a tremendous help to our team. I sometimes even forget that they're there because it's become such an integral part of our workflow. So if this sounds interesting to you and you want to start using them on your video team, follow along. We're going to build one together. Fair warning, there is a tiny bit of soldering involved in building these. If you've never soldered before, don't worry. It's really not advanced. You're really just going to be making a few connections between these wires and some copper pads on a dev board. I think anybody can do it, so just practice a little bit and jump right in. You're going to need a few materials to get started, and I'll make sure I link all of them in the description below so that you can find them at the best price. First off, you'll need the little development boards. These are actually the brains of the tally lights and what the code will actually run on. Now, don't worry, you're not going to have to write any code, you'll just have to load some up onto the board that's already written for you. If you've ever worked with Arduinos, these are going to feel very familiar to you. If you haven't, that's okay. Again, we have all the instructions right here. These dev boards come in a six pack on Amazon for about 15 bucks. Second off, you're going to need some actual lights for the tally lights. Now you can use any kind of LEDs for this, but I'm going to recommend these particular tricolor LEDs. It's really nice because not only do they come with the LEDs and the resistors that are needed in order to run them, but it means that you can actually have a green and a red light all with one LED, which makes it just a little bit easier to set up. This bag of 100 LEDs is $9 on Amazon, so really a bargain and you can make as many as you need. Other than that, all you're going to need are some micro USB cables for power, and I mean come on, who doesn't have a million of those lying around? A soldering iron, some solder, and if you really want to get fancy, some electrical tape and some heat shrink. Also, it's time to come clean. I did not come up with the idea for these tally lights all on my own. After researching tally lights a lot, I found this DIY solution online. All credit for coming up with this idea actually goes to Aaron Hetlem on GitHub. He may not even be the first one to have done it, but his instructions are the ones I'm going to be following and the ones I use to make mine. Again, I'll have links to the instructions in the description, but that's what we'll be following in this tutorial and they're great to reference. All right, let's build some tally lights. Okay, so first we're gonna pull up these instructions on GitHub. It has all the instructions for building the physical tally lights, including all of the soldering that you have to do, but it also has the instructions for programming them without needing to actually know how to code. So let's follow these instructions and build this tally light real quick. All right, so we're set up here and we've got our supplies as well. The first thing we need to do is take our LED here and um, spread out the leads a little bit so that we can more effectively work. All right, so now that we've done that, we need to start soldering things to this guy here. So we're going to start actually just with the ground wire. And so we will get that on our helping hands here. And using the instructions that the link provided, we know which one of these is actually our ground wire. All right, and then we will solder those leads together there. Now here's the thing, this doesn't need to look pretty and it won't look pretty. So. You know, we're just going to do the best we can here. Next, we need to actually solder a resistor to each one of these other leads. I find it's easiest if I just wrap it a little bit and then I can solder it from there. You can always trim off the ends of these afterwards if you need to clean it up. Okay, so we need to do two more.
All right, don't come for me in the comments about this terrible soldering job. I am not claiming to be an expert here, but that looks good enough right there. So the next thing is we need to actually solder them into our little board here. Now again, the website has all the instructions on where exactly every lead needs to go, and we're not gonna make this look perfect. So here we go. Now again, this doesn't look very pretty, but I'm bent over backwards trying to film this for you all right now, so it kinda is what it is. Okay, so now that we've got our tally lights built, we need to actually program them. We start down here and we follow all these instructions to actually get them loaded up. First, we need to download this driver. You can choose either Windows or Macs, whatever you actually need. After we get that driver installed, then we need to install the Arduino IDE. So this is an editor that you're gonna use to actually write the code. Now again, you're not writing code, it's really more of a copy and paste type of situation, but you're going to need this. So pick whichever one you actually need based on what kind of computer you're using. So now that we've installed the Arduino IDE, we have a few more steps to follow to actually get ready. First, we're gonna open it. All right, so now that we've got it open, we need to set a few things up so they're ready to go. We're gonna go up here to preferences, and then we're gonna look at the additional boards manager URLs, and you need to copy and paste this link. I've already done that. Then we're gonna hit okay, close the preferences window. Now, we're going to go to tools, board, boards manager, and we're going to search for ESP8266, and we're gonna install that. Again, I've already got this installed, but you're just going to click the button right here. Once that's done, you can go ahead and close that window. Now we're going to go up here to boards and we are going to actually select this board right here, D1, R2, and Mini. Again, I've already got it selected. Now we're going to go into tools, IWIP variant, and we're going to select V2 higher bandwidth. Now we're going to need to actually download the files that we need. So we're going to jump back into here and we can download the latest release here at this link. So all we need to do is download this zip file. So we'll open that up and we're going to extract the files. Now we need to open up our Arduino folder. Usually it's in documents, Arduino, and then we need to copy the libraries that we just downloaded and the folder. That just means we're going to take this tally light and the libraries folder. You can see I've got those here. Now we're going to open this up and open up the .ino file that will open in the Arduino IDE. This is the actual code that we're going to put on our tally lights. All right, so after you click that, it opens it up here in the Arduino IDE. Okay, so now we're gonna check what COM ports we have open. So we're going to go to tools, port, and then we can see COM1 here. Now we just need to connect our board to our computer with our USB cable. Now we just need to go back into our COM ports and select the new one that came up, so COM3. All we need to do is hit this upload button. You're gonna see some messaging down here in the output and just need to wait until it finishes and then this will take the software and put it onto your dev board. If something goes wrong, you'll see an error message in here and things will turn a bright orange color. So we can see here that it's writing the program to the board and it's officially finished. Your board has been flashed with the software for the tally lights. Okay, so now that this is built and programmed, it's time to actually connect it to our ATEM switcher. It connects over Wi-Fi, so we need to make sure that it is going to be on the same network as our ATEM switcher. We'll also need to know some information about our network as well as the IP address for our switcher. This is a good time to mention, if you don't already have a dedicated network for all of your video broadcast, you really should set one up. I'll make a separate video about all the pros and cons, but it's especially useful if you're going to have tally lights connecting over Wi-Fi. You don't want those IP addresses changing constantly. So let's power on our tally light by just taking this USB cable and plugging it in. This LED should turn white, and that means its network is ready for us to connect to. Basically, we're going to connect to the Wi-Fi network that this tally light is putting out and change its settings so that it will automatically connect to the right network when it starts up the next time. Once this LED is white, there will be a Wi-Fi network called tally light setup. We're going to connect to that, and once we're connected, we're going to navigate to the setup page by using this IP address. Once we're here, it's time to configure all the right settings. We can add a name, though it's not really used for much. After that is the number. Now this number corresponds to the input number on your ATEM switcher that you want to map this tally light to. So let's just say that we want this to be on camera one, so we're going to set this to one. You can have more than one tally light for any given camera. If that's something that fits your workflow, go for it. We're going to ignore the next few settings. They're a little bit more advanced if you decide to go a different route when building these tally lights. If you do try to dig into it, then these might be useful to you, but the way that we built them in this tutorial, we're not going to need them. Next, we're going to add our network name and our password. These are gonna be stored on the dev board itself, 
and used to connect automatically to the network every time you power them on. Keep in mind, if you change your network name or the password, your tally lights will stop working. That's just another reason that we want these to be on a dedicated network. Now we need to configure some IP settings. We wanna make sure that use static IP is checked. Otherwise, our IP addresses might change and that'll just be a huge mess for us down the road. Then we're going to set an IP address for our tally light. You wanna make sure you reserve this IP address in your router as well. I'm not gonna go into that here because all routers are a little bit different, but you can Google how to do that for your specific brand and model. Next, the subnet mask and the gateway value. These are things inherent to your wireless network. These are some pretty standard defaults, and so I think for my network, I'm just going to leave them this way. But if your network is set up in any specific manner other than this, you're gonna to need to make sure you have the correct values for that. Usually you can find these on your router configuration page if you're lost. Finally, we're gonna set the ATEM switcher IP. Again, hopefully you've got this set with a static IP address as well. Otherwise this could become a real problem down the road when your ATEM switcher switches to a new IP address all of a sudden. After we've got all those set, go ahead and hit save changes. After a few seconds, our tally light will reboot and it's ready to use. Just a quick note though, if you ever need to get in and change these settings, just make sure you're on the same network as your tally light and navigate to the IP address that you assign the tally light in your browser. This will take you right back to the setup page where you'll be able to change any of the settings that you need to. As soon as you power on your tally light, it should automatically connect to the network you configured and that means it's connected to your ATEM switcher as well. This means that we can go over here and actually cut around to the different cameras and see the tally light respond. Like I said, we set this to camera one. So as we set camera one to preview, we can see it go green. And as we cut live, we see it go red. This thing is working flawlessly and it really wasn't that hard to set up. If you want a tally light for every single camera that you have, all you need to do is replicate this process as many times as you need tallies. Remember, we bought everything in bulk, so you can build six tally lights for less than $30. There is a small caveat though. ATEM switchers can only support a handful of devices connected to them at one time. And if you've got things like the ATEM software control or companion or whatever else also connected to it, you're gonna have a bad time when you go to set up eight tally lights to connect to it as well. You're gonna run out of spots real quickly and your tally lights will stop connecting altogether. There's an easy way around this though. For some of your tally lights, rather than connecting directly to the ATEM switcher, you can actually connect them to each other and kind of daisy chain them in that way. To do this, all we need to do is change the ATEM switcher IP during the setup process to be the IP address of one of our existing tally lights rather than the ATEM switcher's IP. Let's take a look at this diagram to make it a little bit more clear. We can see here this first tally light, the master tally, has its IP address set to the IP address of the switcher itself. But then if we look at these other tallies, we notice that their switcher IP is actually set to the IP address of the master tally light. They'll still end up working exactly the same. The only difference is that in the background, they're actually connecting to a tally light instead of to the switcher. You won't notice this at all, except for in one small scenario. That first tally light has to be powered on for the other tally lights to work. We actually have our tally lights set up this way, we have camera one set as the main tally light and all of our other tally lights connect to it. This works for us because we'll never have a situation where we're not using camera one, so we don't have to worry about our tallies not connecting correctly. If you go this route, make sure that the master tally is something that will always be turned on. You don't even have to be using it, it just needs to be on. Now that you've got your tallies made, it's time to figure out how you wanna fix them to your cameras. Now the easy budget option, wrap some electrical tape around this to protect the wires and gaff tape it to your cameras. This will honestly work great and isn't a problem. I'm a little bit of a tinkerer though, and I happen to have a 3D printer sitting on my desk right over there. So I designed little cases for the tally lights that I then attached to our cameras using VHB tape. It's still not like the fanciest, but it protects them a little bit better than just a little bit of tape would. This is definitely not necessary though, and feel free to make it your own. That's kind of the benefit of doing things DIY like this. You can make it so that it fits exactly what you need for your space. And remember, you only spent five bucks on each of these. So if they're not the most protected things, it's not the end of the world. These tally lights have been seriously awesome to us, giving an extra level of communication between our cam ops and our director. Hopefully they can help you do the same and really improve your live stream because of the increase in communication. I also wanna mention, these are set up specifically for an ATEM switcher, but there are versions of this code for all sorts of different switchers. We used to use vMix as a switcher, and we actually had our tally lights set up to communicate with that. I'll put a link in the description to the code that we used to set that up. It's a little bit different and you may need to tweak it to your needs, but just know that it works in a very similar way. I'll also make sure all the links for everything we talked about here are also in the description below. So make sure you go there for any help you might need. I hope these tallies work out for you. And if you have any questions or you just wanna say, hey, I made these, leave a comment below. I'd love to hear from you. Until next time.